If I can relay a message to America, uh, I would like to go ahead and say, America, I believe you're in a handbasket and you're about ready to go on a trip. However, most people think that uh, Christians are going to be made to walk the plank. I think they are. We're in the times of Noah, though. We're going to be walking the plank, maybe not necessarily into the ark, but to the ark of covenant. Just a little play on words there for those that I believe will soon be raptured. For it's obvious to me that reading scripture and understanding what's taking place leads us to understand we are in end times. I don't even doubt that for a moment. Let me get into some of the news to say what it is I want to say and then I'm going to comment on it. Um, this is from an article that comes out of the um, Jerusalem Post and it's uh, labeled uh, Israel, Iran taking back seat in Biden's foreign policy speech that was given on Thursday. In Biden making, is Biden making a mistake not yet reaching out personally to Israel and the uh, Arab leaders to assure them that America has got your back. Biden's not even talking about it. He hasn't even brought it up. Let's go on with the speech. U.S. President Joe Biden's first foreign policy speech focused on urgent issues such as situation in Myanmar in the war in Yemen, alongside several other um, long-term challenges for the United States, such as its policy towards China, Russia, and the United States refugee cap. But Biden did not mention Iran's nuclear program, the Abraham Accords, Israel, or the Palestinians. Very important to note. Let me go on. Biden spent a significant part of his speech on Thursday about Russia and China. There's a little bit of a signal here that the story of Asia is going to be more of a, of a story than the Middle East, which might be more of a second tier story. The Middle East is a region is taking a back seat to Asia and Asia is going to take a back seat to the pandemic. This is all about Biden's speech. The combination of the pandemic, climate change, China are the new dynamics. For now, any Israeli-Palestinian initiative will not be seen on the level of the President or the Secretary of State. Mark uh, Dubowich, it's a CEO and found, uh, for, of the Foundation of the Defense of Demo Demo uh, Democrats in Washington said the Biden team is hard at work planning its Iran strategy, strategy through detailed integrated meetings, interagency meetings. Okay, this is behind closed doors. This is like, you know, if you can picture it in the movies, you know, back in the old days, you had closed doors, dark room, cigarette smoke, all these men sitting around a table and talking. Don't want anyone else to know what they're talking about, but they're planning something. It's a good way of looking at it because I can tell they are just by so many different articles and what's going on. While the President Biden has not reached out to Israel and or the Arab leaders to assure them has his back, Debowich added, these are the countries in Iran missiles range with deep anxieties about, and they use the word here, whip sawing of the United States policy could mean for the security of their people. Whip sawing, two, two men in a saw and it's bouncing around. One has to pull, the other one pulls back again. So they're, they're bouncing back and forth here, but I don't think they are. I think they know exactly what they're doing. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Nathan Sachs, director of the Center for the Middle East Policy at Brookings said, the near total absence of the Middle East from Biden's speech is notable. This is my point. It's extremely notable if you know end times, if you understand scripture. Uh, let's see, it was notable, I'm looking for it here. Uh, with the very important exception of Yemen, Biden devoted his first major foreign policy speech at the, uh, as president to other nations and other issues. Yemen, Yemen has the Houthis, Houthis are backed by Iran. Biden administration, what they're saying is to Saudi Arabia, 
we are not going to give you any more military support as long as you're fighting against the Houthis within Yemen. In Yemen. Now, the Houthis in Yemen is very much like Hezbollah in Lebanon. Same situation there. But the Biden administration goes underneath the understanding they want you to take from it is they're in there for humanitarian reasons. America is saying in Yemen to leave the Houthis alone because they are the ones that are feeding your people, which is the truth. But the truth, understood, is Yemen, a power that is supported by Iran, has control over all the ports and airports and everything, all the, the commerce that comes into Yemen. So if the Houthis don't get their way, they stop the food from reaching the people in Yemen and starving them to death. So the Biden administration is saying, we're going to go ahead and support the Houthis because of humanitarian crisis so food gets to Yemen, not solving the problem at all. All as they're doing is in a roundabout way, the smoke-filled dark room, they're saying, let's keep Iran's power in Yemen. That's exactly what they're saying. I'll go on. Let me make some more points here. Okay. Uh, in one sense, this is misleading, he said. The question of Iran's nuclear program and the JCPOA is a fact high on Biden's priority, but the administration's choice to wisely not to show its cards yet. Folks, please listen to this. Please. But as another sense, the absence of any mention of the Middle East, including Israel, is telling. It's very telling. I'm going to tell you what's going on and give you my shot here at this. The Biden administration is in talks secretly behind closed doors with Iran, with the other warring factions against Israel. That would be Hezbollah, that would be Fatah, that would be Gaza. You notice Gaza's kind of quieted down right now? Oh, yes, they have. And the Biden administration is having secret talks. Again, this is acknowledging it from these people. From this article is acknowledging this. So what's going on? Okay, allow me to summarize this whole thing for you. This whole situation that's taking place. If you knew that a building was going to fall, a large building, and it was full of people that you don't like, would you tell them in advance? Okay, if Biden realizes that a war is about ready to break out and Israel will be eliminated, what's Biden going to do? How would he react? Exactly the way he is. Biden is picking up where Obama left off. Where did Obama leave off? Do you remember the billions of dollars in cash given to Iran? Do you remember the drone, our most best drone that we have, was flown over to, to uh, Iran and just parked in one of their airports going, oh, whoops, we accidentally lost control of it. Here it is. What was Obama's uh, desire? Was to support Iran. What's going on here, folks? What's really going on? What's deep in here? And that is, is that... If you see Bible prophecy as it relates to Israel, there is a place in Bible prophecy that talks about this given situation. Excuse me for my mixed up desk here. It's not usually this way. Well, actually it's usually worse. Anyway, Psalms 83. For lo, thine enemy make a tumult, and they, ha they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They have taken cra crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. I, I feel passionately about this. That it is in a situation in a time and end times right now where we are. 
I don't have any more room on my desk to set this piece of paper down. Here we go. Anyway, that there is going to be a time when Israel will become a cup of trembling to the nations. And the nations will decide that it's time to go ahead and let the cards fall and Israel be eliminated. Why would we be on the side if we we think that Israel's going to be eliminated, whose side should America be on? I said earlier, I said, America, if I was to summarize you, I would say, you're in a basket and you're ready to take a trip downhill. If, if this scripture that I gave you, Psalms 83, doesn't line up now, when could it ever possibly, knowing that we're in end times as we know, as we understand and have been studying scripture. What, what else, what other conclusion would you come to? Can I give you some of my other notes? Yeah, I don't know if you guys do that or not. I write notes and I put them on a piece of paper here. Um, let's see. One of the other things I wanted to bring up to you, and that was um, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. This fits in at this time too. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them. If you remember a couple videos back, I asked you, I said, who are the they? For when they shall say, they, in my mind now, is made up. I get it. I understand. This is they, which is America, which is Russia. This is China. This will be the Palestinians. This will be Iran. When they shall say peace and safety, for they've got the Biden administration bowing down to their needs, then sudden destruction will come upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And listen to this part, and they will not escape. So two pieces of scripture here, Psalms 83, the actions of the United States, them saying peace and safety, they realize and think and believe now with the Biden administration they can take Israel, let the cards fall in the Middle East, which explains why Biden really has nothing to do when talking about Iran, the, their missile defense system, stopping Iran, saying nothing about it because it's behind closed doors. John Kerry was talking with Iran and the Gulf states back when Trump was president. Trump actually had to stop him. He's saying, don't worry, wait until we get back into office again. And when we do, we'll settle it then. Okay. Um, sign, warning, construction ahead. God at work. Daniel 2, 21. And he changeth times and season, he removeth kings, and he set up kings, giving wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them who understand. Who understands? Those in the light. Oh boy, this is so much fun. Sometimes I just I, I just get beside myself because I'm just going, my gosh, this is just jumping off the pages of scripture here. Repeatedly. Just talked about that. I have it here, right here, you guys. Just give me a moment. Oh, I thought I had it here. 1 Thessalonians. I've misplaced it already. Right here. Right here in front of me. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief of the night, for when they shall say peace and safety. But brethren, you're not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief darkness you're of light those in light by the way are the seed those those in light those are those are those are predestined they're known before the foundations of the earth those are in that of light is not of a light it is they are the light you are the light you are the seed light seed compare the two together bible scripture will make more sense if you do that uh genesis what is it uh 315 right here and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed two seeds darkness the other seed light predestined those that were known before the foundations of the earth you are of that seed Noah the days of Noah 
uh, Noah walked as a perfect man. He wasn't perfect in himself. His seed was perfect, if you read that and understand correctly. His seed was perfect. The, uh, the seed of the light. And that's you. That's you folks. If you understand this and you're catching on, you believe Jesus is your Savior, that's you. You know. So you sense and understand what's going on here. I'll leave it up to you to go ahead and play it through. You run it through your mind there and think about it and get back to me in the comments what you think. I've kind of been a little bit remiss here. I'm so sorry. But, but, but forgive me. W welcome here all the time, anytime, all of you. Um, I, I don't preach or teach here. I, I'd like to think that this is fellowship and I'm leading you to have you examine scripture and the situation that we're in, the issues that are being discussed, and that you can see what's going on also the way I do. But at the same time, please use the replies to comment back if you see it something differently. Long video, sorry about that. Can um, Let me just wrap it up right here. Again, thank you for stopping in. And by the way, your kind words and all that that you folks say and, and you give thanks to me, Please believe me, that, uh, I appreciate that. It's, it's, it's gratifying to the extent that it makes me feel I want to keep doing this. And that makes me happy when I hear that you folks are happy. So I give thanks to you for those replies. Until next time, folks, again, thank you for stopping in. And a special prayer I say to God for all of those that come to this site. In Jesus' name I pray for your wisdom and knowledge and understanding and that uh, you continue to grow and draw more near to God. Again, I pray in Jesus' name for your health to continue. Until next Sunday, amen. Folks, thanks again for stopping in. I appreciate it.